My name's Stuart Tripp. I'm a H5 hand cyclist. So I ride a, I ride a, uh, a three-wheel bike with my arms. I grew up in Trelgan, which is 160 kilometres east of Melbourne in La Trobe Valley, Gippsland. Uh, I had a great, great, Trelgan was a great place to grow up. Um, I was very lucky. My parents afforded me every opportunity to, to do sport that I wanted to do, but I wasn't very good at it. I was involved in a car accident, a country road. Uh, I think possibly I uh, went to avoid a, an animal that was on the road and lost control of the vehicle and went down the embankment, hit a log and spun the car around sideways and I hit a tree side on. So a tree came into the, into the car through the, through the driver's door. Uh, multiple injuries to me. Uh, I, woke my, I had a passenger with me, I woke him up in the morning about seven, about six o'clock and pointed to where a farmhouse was and he went and raised the alarm and effectively saved my life. He was just a normal person going around his, his normal life doing activities and then had this catastrophic accident to which impacted his life and, and family of course. And the story is very powerful of, of overcoming adversity and how you can rebuild. Out of darkness comes light and positivity. Went through a long process of hospitalisation. Uh, three months I made a decision to have my leg amputated because I had a very bad staph infection in my leg and uh, that wasn't healing and that was effectively killing me. Unbeknownst to me, Michael, my twin brother, had been the chaplain at Royal Melbourne Hospital at the time and, and visited and cared for Stuart during his very traumatic time in hospital. Stuart tells me the story that he asked Michael to, to actually be in the room and witness the big decision of his leg um, being taken off. Probably five years after that crash was when I had the most difficult time and that was when I was contemplating suicide and I was like a man drowning and, um, and really struggling to keep my head above water. Through the support of my family and friends to help me get to the point where I recognised I needed to go and talk to somebody about how I was feeling. But I couldn't figure it out myself. When I started that process, it was very soon after that we, that we started talking about exercise and the benefits of exercise. I remember speaking to Stu early on about um, what he was like before his accident um, and then seeing pictures of him like as a big boy when he first got on the bike. I realised very early on that Stu was a much happier and healthier person when he rode his bike. So I was ready to support him 100 plus percent to whatever goal that he wanted to achieve uh, because I knew that he was going to be a better human being for it. He's a funny guy, um, very much a larrikin, but there's that burning drive underneath that he probably hides a little bit. I've been out the road with him a couple of times and he hates to get beaten. So he's, uh, we call him the, uh, the, the terror on beach road because he's always terrorising some, uh, some guys on, <laughs> on the, what you might say is a normal bike and there's Stu either leading at the front or just terrorising a bunch. Quite often say to people, I, I train by myself, but I never ride alone. Because I, I, go, I go out on a ride and I'll invariably meet someone or, and we'll have a chat or we'll ride, we'll ride together for a while or we'll go back and have a coffee together. Like just, I've, I've, got to know, I've, got, I've got to meet so many people through cycling. Um, such a wonderful community to be part of. Stuart's also been involved in a lot of our programs here at the VIS, so he does a lot of, our, a lot of motivational speaking. Um, it's a very powerful story, it's a power of, powerful story of inspiration. We often have this debate about whether if you're an athlete with a disability whether you're inspiring or not and I absolutely think Stu is inspiring to a lot of people. He wouldn't necessarily think that and he wouldn't necessarily go out to be that but by nature he is because he's, um, he's showing people what's you know, that, that next level and, and what you can do if you put your mind to things. By the time Rio comes around, Stu's going to be as best prepared as he could possibly be. You know, it's been like a three year build up and every year we've got better and better. Um, so I, I'm feeling pretty positive about this one. I'm sure he will continue to be very successful post Rio. Uh, and when the children are growing up, he will decide to again re-enter the workforce in some capacity. Um, and the skill set that he's got through all of all of his life and times will, will be brought to that new position. If you had have told me a minute before I hit that tree what, what that would be like, what that process would be like, I would have said just 
put a bullet in my head. I, I, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can go through that. Um, having said that, I wouldn't change anything in my life for kids.